What attracts me to industrial design objects are the precision that they were made with, the workmanship and the longevity that the well-made object had. I find the fascination and the things that I collect mm -hmm. and the things that I photograph. Jan, thank you so much for inviting us into your home. I'm looking around the space and I see a lot of really unique objects. Uh, can you tell me about the kind of things that you collect? Well, I've been a collector of industrial design objects, mm -hmm. whether they be celebrated or just utilitarian objects, even actual industrial devices and tools. So I'm not really approaching it from high design per se, but just for the integrity of the design. And that seems like something that informs your photography practice. Can you tell me more about how that relates to your collecting? Susan Sontag observed that photography was a kind of collecting. The things that are most often collected are the exotic and the far-flung. For me, photography is about the interpretation of things to bring an understanding of the thing that's not immediately apparent. And so the things that I'm interested in are often things that people pass by without any notice. My interest in objects is uh, very much the same. I get back to this old idea of being attracted to the industrial, to the quote-unquote heavy duty, and yet there's a kind of elegance to it. Enigma machines, for example, are based on this kind of elegance of mathematics, but they also are made to withstand the conditions of war. I've brought three Enigma machines. Would you like to come with me and take a look? So the main components are this letter panel, and when you open it up, you reveal the key to the machine, these rotors. Look at that detail, this contact. Think about this was life or death, and so they had to be so precise when they machined these pieces. And then you have here your keyboard, and so you type in your message, and you see these rotors are moving. So this has to go through the entire wheel before it engages the third. So it's incredibly complex. Every morning, the rotors and these cables will be put in a different order. Well, these are extraordinary. What's this one here? This is the rarest of Enigma machines. This would have been used on the U-boats. This one's also fully operational. And what sets this apart, you've got four rotors here. And where the other machines had numbers, these have letters. So that's one of the more distinctive features. This looks like it has some refinement in terms of the manufacturer. The Admiral of the Naval Fleet was really concerned about the messages being intercepted for the U-boat. So he actually had these machines made in secret and they really did make a lot of refinements. Most notably, the fact that there are the four rotors that really adds that extra layer of complexity to the codes. What I think is attractive about the mechanical age is that in opening up these devices here, you can see how the connections are made, how the mechanism works. And in the digital age, you can see that. Alan Turing really built the first sort of computer to do this. And they're devices that are kind of on the, the cusp of shifting from that mechanical world to the digital age. Some kind of event happens that changes our worldview. And I think that things like that have an impact on collecting because they, they reshape how we look at the world. And those things have an influence on art, they have an influence on design, they have an influence on everything.